us out back. He's the Lord of Kakadu. He made Mount Kosciuszko, and he made Uluru. Every mountain, every river, every Simpson Desert, he's the Lord of the Kimberley. He made the mighty Darling, he made the Coral Sea. Every mountain, every river, every land Australia his glories everywhere every mountain every river every waterfall one and only God the one and only God the one and only God made it all the one and only God the one and only God the one Set us free from mean old crocodile sin. Sin is like a great big crocodile. Sin is a dangerous trap. Sin can creep up like a crocodile. All of a sudden, snap! Oh yeah. Sin is like a great big crocodile. Sin is a dangerous trap. Sin can creep up like.
king of the jungle? Who, who, who's the king of the sea? Bubble, bubble, bubble. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I'll tell you, J-E-S-U-S. Yes, he's the king of me. He's the king of the universe, the jungle and the sea. Come on. Who's the king of the jungle? Who, who, who's the king of the sea? Bubble, bubble, bubble. Who's the king of the universe? And who's the king of me? I'll tell you. J-E-S-U-S. Yes, he's the king of me. I've been around the world a couple of times and maybe more Seen the sights, I've had the lights on every foreign shore But when my mates all ask me the place that I had all I tell them right away What do we tell them? Give me a home among the gum trees With lots of plum trees A sheep, a two, a kangaroo A clothesline out the back Veranda out the front and an old rocking chair You can see me in the kitchen Cooking up a roast Or Vegemite on toast Just you and me, a cup of tea Later on we'll settle down And go out on the porch And watch the possums play Give me a home among the gum trees With lots of plum trees a sheep, a two, a kangaroo, a clothesline out the back, veranda out the front, and an old rocking chair. There's a safe place up the corner and a woolies down the street, and a brand new place they've opened up as they reach. <laughs> Shearing sheep, we've been mustering stock. We've been culling out roots, we've been spraying the crops. We've been droving cattle up an old stock route. Now it's Saturday night, we pile in the ute. We're the boys from the bush and we're back in town. Well, the dogs in the bag and the foot goes down. We're live members of the Outback Club Where the boys from the bush come in from the scrub Been out in the heat We've been loading the trucks Been fixing fences We've been choking on dust We curse the rain We curse the drought Now it's Saturday night Shout. We're the boys from the bush and we're back in town We get high when the sun goes down We're live members of the Outback Club We're the boys from the bush coming from the scrub We're back in town 
energy and so much fun ready for you guys today. It is going to be an awesome, awesome day. All right, I hear the seniors have got a bit of a something, something going down. They don't need to hop on a bus today. More about that later if you don't know. All right, we might see Tom. We might see, is it Emily? Yeah. Uh, Ranger Dan. Yeah. Chief Derwin. Those wayward sisters. They're pretty cool, hey, those wayward sisters are cool. Anybody drinks the thing with the poo in it, with the wombat poo? Cool. All right, I'm going to ask the band to come up on stage. We're going to start the morning with some energy, with some dancing. All righty. So, everybody up on your feet. Get this body ready. Jump and jump and jump and jump and jump and. You got those actions? Yeah. Awesome. All right, Trin. Caitlin. Yeah. Let's do this. Go. We're going to sing uh, a sprinkle song. <laughs> Love our sprinkle song. You sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. And you go, what? What? And you come together. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We'll try it again. You ready? Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. And what? And what? Good job. Are we good? Let's go. We'll start with us.
go sing another song about God being able to do everything with just one word, one touch, whatever. One thing, you can do it all. That's really good. But, yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. You ready? Start with a little bit of clap.
please be seated. Now, I need a bit of help here because my memory's failing me. No old jokes, thanks. Yesterday, when Chief Derwin came and he had the memory verse, all right, what was the memory verse written on? Who remembers what memory verse was written on? All right, right up the back. Yep, tell me, what was the memory verse written on? Snake skin, awesome, all right. Now, on day one, on Tuesday, what was the memory verse written on? The back, back, back with the red hat, the hand right in the air. Wombat poo, all right. So we had wombat poo and we had snake skin. Hmm, today, I wonder what they're written on today. So make sure you sit, don't put your hands up like this, your arms will fall off after a while and they'll be like, Ugh. I am sure Chief Derwin will get you up here to help, okay? So, are we ready for Chief Derwin? Come on, guys. I think he needs a bit more than that. All right, let's bring him on out. Well, g'day, boys and girls, blokes, shillers. It is great to see you. It is me again, Chief Derwin, back to bring you some more evolutionary scriptology as we seek out more amazing animals around Australia. Now, we've been looking at some pretty cool ones recently, but did you know that there's actually a heap of amazing animals that actually lay scripture in their eggs? There's actually, they do special things with their eggs. It's amazing. There's heaps of different ones. And today, I've been on the trail of a huge one. It's kind of like an emu, but it's a really special one. It's called the Emucus Versalis. It's, it's a little bit gross in some ways, but it's really cool. Now, I've never actually seen one of these things, but they love laying their eggs in little nests, and they lay a bunch of eggs all together, and I found a nest. Check this out. It's, I have never seen a nest this big from one of these guys. It's amazing. Now, as always, handling eggs takes amazing care. And there's a lot of these ones here. So I, I don't know if I can handle all these eggs myself. I think I'm going to need some help from some people. But it's not just any ordinary people. I'm going to need people who've got really careful safe hands. So if you think you can help me, I need to see your hands so I can check out if you're going to be able to like really help me out well. So I, I better come around and check. Let's see. If I can, get some, can I get you to come up and help me? So go up, go up and stand near the nest. Let's see. Um, and I reckon, I reckon you'll be able to help me. Yeah, go on. Oh, that's a nice, nice soft vest he's got there. Ah, uh, yes. You come up and help me. That's oh, great hands. You, oh, amazing hands there. Oh, I, I don't know. I trust yeah, I don't, no, no, I don't think so. No, no. Um, oh, yes, beautiful, yep. Um, let's go with you, beautiful. Um, yes, thank you. Oh, what have I got so far? Two, oh, oh, it's hard to count. Two, four, six, seven, need, I think I need two more. One there, and let's go one here. All right, let's, let's get these people. All right, I reckon, I reckon we've got some pretty safe hands here. Show me your hands again. Just, he's hiding his hands. What's, oh, no, he's good. It's written on his hands. I don't know about that. All right. All right. I think we're good. All right. Yeah, he was good about him before. Okay. Here we go. Now, we're going to have to... So, you've got to be really careful with these eggs. Do you think you can do that? All right. So, I'm going to... I'll bring the nest. I need to very carefully... Can you grab an egg for me? Oh, look at that. So careful. Grab an egg. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. But, you know... Whoa, 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 whoa. Two hands. Two hands. Two... Woo. Good job. Playing with eggs, mate. Oh. All right. Fantastic. Here we go. Oh. Oh, I like this. Okay. Um. Were you just shaking that egg? Wait. All right. Now, we got these amazing eggs. Now, these eggs are incredibly special because the Emucus versalis. It doesn't actually lay eggs for its young. It actually lays verses inside the eggs. So we actually don't need to really worry about the eggs 
praying at all, actually, because we actually have to pray. I don't know. I was like, we actually need to break these eggs to get the verses out. So I need each of you to actually, don't really need to be careful with your hands at all. I need you to break those eggs open, see if we can get what's in those verses out. Do you reckon we can get those out there? Oh, my. Oh, all right. Fantastic. There should be something inside there. How are we going? Here's some, let's see if we can. Ready? Oh, oh, there it is. Look at that. All right. All right, let's see if we can. Hey, hold, hold that for me. You got it? Ready? Oh, there we go. There's one back there. Oh, look at this. Oh, we got them all. This guy's like peeling his egg. Gosh. All right. Oh, break it, pop it. There we go. Oh, oh, look at this. It's got the same verse that we've been looking at. What a coincidence. Amazing. Well, I reckon, now my egg handlers, you've shown me you can get them out, but I, I don't know. I, this doesn't look quite right again. I reckon we should have this by now. I wonder, I wonder if, while we're sorting this out, I wonder if we can get people to stand up. I wonder how many people have been practicing my dance. I was practicing my dance moves yesterday, and I, and I know I saw some other campers out there practicing their dance. I wonder if I can get you guys to stand up, and maybe we can do our dance as we say the memory verse, and maybe these guys will be able to sort themselves out while we're doing our dance. You reckon they can do that? I wonder if we can do it first. So, I reckon if we get the words up there, maybe we can do our dance together. Are you ready? All right, here we go. We're getting on three, two, one. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I'll go to the hands. Ready? Romans 10, verse 9. Oh, how'd they go? Shuffle, shuffle down a little bit, I think. No, no, you're perfect. Right, back, right back where we were. Beautiful. What's, did, they, did they do it? If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Oh, well done. Give him a clap. That was really good. All right. Let's see if we can do this one more time. You ready? All right. Do you want to do it? Do you want dance? You've got to warm up. All right. Three, two, one. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, verse 9. Oh, that's pretty good. You know what? I reckon, I reckon you guys can do even, even better. I reckon if we get rid of some of this. Oh, no, no, no. You leave, you love yours. Yeah, I got, I got these ones. I got mine. Do you guys reckon you can do it like this? They're confident. They're confident. All right. Do the dancing. If you're up here, make sure you're doing the dancing. All right, here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, verse 9. Oh, that was great. Well done. I reckon we can get rid of this one. No, I'm going to fight you for it. Give it here. Give it here. Give it here. Ah. What am I paying you for? No, I need it. Thank you. Oh, gosh. And that one. Yeah. All right. Oh. You'd think this was my show. Enough. All right, you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10. Verse 9. Oh, oh, too easy. Yeah, give me that. Stand down, mates. Thank you. Oh, look at these little rascals. All right. It's all on you now. It's all in here. I believe in you. All right, here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, verse 9. 
Oh, give yourselves a clap. Well done. Oh. And give these guys a great help too. Now you guys made a right mess up here. Disgraceful. Do you reckon you can pick up a piece and chuck it in that nest there? Just to, God, we can't, we can't litter in the outback. That's one of the things we've got to make sure that we look after our amazing world. Because that ranger Dan, he scares me. I mean, we've we got to look after it. Thank you very much. Give these guys a great clap as they go and sit back down. Well done. Thank you, campers. Well done. You know, it's pretty amazing how many eggs were in there. Because you know what? I have never in my life seen an Emucus versalis egg nest. That is so big. Normally, there's only like two or three eggs. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, they're also like... They were really light. They're normally a bit heavier than that. Like, it's really airy. But, I mean, it's got to be the mucus for size. I mean, what else could it be? Like, that big eggs. It's like, not like the big dinosaur eggs, right? Oh. So, what was the name of the creature with the egg things? The spitty kind of, what did you tell, um, Mr. Collins? M M mucus? So, yeah, I'm with you. Okay. So, do you reckon there might be a dinosaur maybe coming? <laughs> never say never. All right. I think I'm going to bring the band out here for just one song before we get started with um, our drama. So let's everybody get up on your feet. This is a really good song. I love this song. Actions are amazing. All right. I can feel you coming out on the stage. <laughs> I say, I know you're there. I know you're there. <laughs> All right. Hands on hips. I like this. This is where we start. Something to do with a bird? Yeah. But I've got something special. A uh, what, what, what? Something special to do. See, they're not listening. Yeah. I like that sound. You got something special? Yeah. Something really special? Yeah, a little bit. I'm going to let you be special. All right, so we have our four animal friends. Who remembers our friends? Can you show me the actions for the first one? Good job. Who's our second one? It's a wombat. And who's our third one? Who's our gecko? And who's our fourth one? A kangaroo. All right, I got something special. Each time, you're gonna get an animal and you have to scream it. So year five and year six, whenever it says old black crow, you have to scream it. Give it to me. Good job. All right, year four, whenever it says wombat, go scream wombat. Good job. Now year two and year three, whenever it says gecko, scream gecko. And then kindy and you won whenever it says kangaroo, scream kangaroo. Yeah. All right, we'll do a run, we'll do a little practice. All right, ready? You six? You six? You got it, you got a crow, man. And then you got Yep. Yep. <laughs> this is chaos. All right, I'll give you a timing. You ready? You got old black crow. The wombat, the gecko, and the kangaroo. You ready? You got Oh black crow. The wombat, the gecko, and the kangaroo. We'll do it again. You ready? Oh black crow. The wombat, the gecko, and the kangaroo. Yeah. All right. You good? That sounded good. You got good. it down, Pat? <laughs> All right. We'll go. Now we put our hands on our hips. We'll do a little left and a right.
sit, 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 sit. Pardon me. Okay, let's do a bit of a quick recap. What happened yesterday in our drama for Tom of the, the Outback? Who's going to tell me something that happened yesterday? All right, I'm going to go with the young lady here. What happened yesterday? Big voice. Mac and Mel went to, thank you, I like that picture. Okay, so Mac and Mel and Emily and Tom went with Mac and Mel. A flying fox, okay. What's with this wombat poo? <laughs> wombat poo's everywhere. All right, so oh, that sort of bit, sounds good, sounds good. All right, so the last I remember is that... Emily didn't want to go, did she? She was here and Tom's like, no, I'm going. And Ranger Dan said, no, you have to stay here, wait here. But Tom disobeyed, did his own thing, didn't he? He took off and he went with the Wayward Sisters. Do you reckon the Wayward Sisters know what they're doing? No, not at all. Not, no idea. All right, so get yourself comfy. Some interesting things are happening today. Some very interesting things. All right, here they come. To the countryside, us the way would, us the way would, wreck it all up with a full dog, us the way would, sisters. Come on, me and join in the fun, from all over our show. Perfect spot to set up the flying fox. Oh, look how much that creek has come up. It's hard to believe it was only a dry creek bed a few hours ago. Maybe if you listened to Dan, it wouldn't be so hard to believe. Maybe if we listened to Dan, we would be sitting around doing nothing instead of actually doing something to get back to mum and dad. You do want to get back to mum and dad, don't you? Yeah, but... Yeah, well, this creek isn't going to go down before it gets dark tonight. So if we simply wait around, do nothing, we'll be stuck in the dark without sleeping bed, without sleeping... T without tents, and without mum and dad. <laughs> oh, don't worry, Emily. We'll have you and your brother back with your parents quicker than you can say. Ask the way with sisters. That's right, and you guys are going to be one of the stars in our TV show. Really? You sure are. This will be part of my new segment where I show our viewers how to make machines using a few ropes and pulleys and things you can li find lying around in the outback. We'll call it malfunctions. Well, Mal. What have we got here? Well, Mac, we've cut down two A-frames here to support the flying fox on. And we got this long piece of rope, which will go from one end of the creek to the whole other. Here we go. Pull that tight. Then we got this carabiner here, which will go on the rope to support the flying fox. There we go. On there. And we got this piece of wood, which I will show you how to use as a seat. Now, Mac, all we need is a few more helpers. Well, what about these out back here? This is Mac. Good idea, Mac. Hmm. Who should I choose? Yep, you. Oh. How about this side? Get you, and you there. There we go. Let me hold this. Let me hold this one. Now, can you three come hold this side of the A-frame and support it nice and tight? Okay, now. Thomas and Mac, can you take that side of the A-frame and the long piece of rope across to the other side of the creek? Pick it up. Uh, what, what, did, what did you say? Can you and Mac take this side of the A-frame and the long piece of rope across to the other side of the creek? But, but we can't. Can't you? No, that's 
why we're building the Flying Fox. No, but if you don't take that side of the A-frame across to the, side of the, the other side of the creek, the Flying Fox won't work. I told you we should have listened to Dan. I'm talking about this. Dan! Thomas thought that we could build a flying fox to get across the creek to get back to mum and dad. No, no, it wasn't my idea. It was the Wayman sisters. How were you going to set it up on the other side? I hadn't thought of that. Well, why am I not surprised? Look, this is not going to work. You're going to have to pack this up right away. Sorry, guys. You're going to have to put it all down and. Sorry, kids, that you couldn't be any help in the end. Everybody give them a big clap. <laughs> Don't sit back down. Trying to build a flying fox across a creek. So silly. Oh, okay. Thomas, can I have a word with you? What did I say yesterday about crossing that creek? Not to do it myself? No, I said no one could do it, remember? Not you, not me, not the Wayward Sisters. But the Wayward Sisters... Yeah, th they're famous because they have their own TV show but it's making you blind to what they're actually like. You think you know what they're doing, but they don't know what they're doing, do they? Do they know what they're doing? Mm. No. no. They don't know what they're doing. I'm not blind. I know I said you were blind, but I don't mean like physically blind, but more of a spiritual blindness, a blindness that makes you like blind to uh, something you can trust, right? Uh, actually, Jesus had a lot to say about this kind of blindness. What, why do you always talk about Jesus? Well, he makes a lot more sense than Mac and Mal do, but actually, the real reason is Jesus is the most amazing person that ever lived. He is so great, and he came and lived on this world and then died for us to save us. Did he even come to save Mac and Mal? Well, he came to save the clever and the not-so-clever, the good and even the bad. Actually... How about I tell you a story about how Jesus saved two different men on his way through to Jericho? And, and you two can help me, all right? So, Tom, you go sit with that bowl there. And, Emily, could you pull this table out and you sit with that? And I'm going to give you a, a big purple coat using uh, this sleeping bag here. And uh, it's purple because purple, when Jesus was around, was a symbol of having a lot of money. So you're going to be a wealthy man, all right? There you go. Okay, and... Actually, you guys as the crowd, could you help me as well? No? Yes? Oh, no, no, like all together, yeah? No, yeah, all, all right, all right, good, good. So, what I need you to do is when I say the word coins, can you rub your fingers together and go cha-ching? All right, let's have a go. Coins. Oh, what do I put in a vending machine? Coins. All right, good, just making sure you're listening. All right, and also... Because you're a pretty great-looking crowd right here, could, when I say the crowd does something during the story, could you be the crowd for me? Yeah? yeah? All right, great. Okay. Let's get into this story. Our first man was dressed in purple. Inside a nice, cool house, Zacchaeus sat at his counting table, counting his coins. Good job. He loved the sound of coins. Coins, which he'd taken from the people. Coins, which he had to give to Rome. And coins that he was going to keep for himself. Zacchaeus was greedy. Zacchaeus was rich. Zacchaeus was a tax collector who took more money from people than he should have. He lost all of his friends. But who needed friends when he had the sound of his? But he couldn't hear his coins today. Because outside there was a crowd. A noisy crowd. Zacchaeus yelled, quiet! Quiet! I'm trying to count. I'm trying to count. He yanked open his door. Oof. Look out, said a man. Jesus is coming. Jesus, thought Zacchaeus. Well, he's a man that I want to see. Zacchaeus hurried out into the street. 
But he had to be careful because people didn't like Zacchaeus. Lucky he was small, so he could sneak and he could creep. But he could not see over the crowd. He could not see Jesus. He looked around and then at the end of the road, he saw it. A large sycamore tree. If he climbed up that tree, he could see everything. So that's what he did. He ran over and he climbed up the tree all the way to the top. Oh. But down the road and around the corner sat another man and he also liked the sound of coins. Good job. But instead of sitting inside in the cool at a large table, he was sitting outside in the heat on a dusty road and he wasn't wearing purple for the rich. He was dressed in rags. He rattled his bowl and called out, spare a few coins, spare a few coins. Help feed blind Bartimaeus. Help feed blind Bartimaeus. But the crowd, they weren't listening. They were looking for Jesus. And they saw him. And they went, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Bartimaeus called out, what's going on? The crowd said, it's Jesus. Can't you see? Bartimaeus said, Jesus, the healer? Bartimaeus had waited for this chance for a long time, so he called out loudly, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy on me. But the crowd said, quiet, old man. Quiet, old man. But Bartimaeus, he would not be quiet. He was blind, but he saw who Jesus was. Son of David, please help me. Son of David, please help me. Jesus stopped. Jesus said, bring him to me. Bring him to me. Bartimaeus jumped up to his feet and felt his way towards Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? He replied, Master, I want to see. Master, I want to see. Receive your sight. Your faith in me has healed you. Receive your sight. Your faith in me has healed you. And even as Jesus was speaking, the darkness lifted from his eyes, and Bartimaeus got to see the face of his saviour, Jesus. He looked around at the sky, at the trees, at the amazed crowd. It's true. You bet it's true. Bartimaeus got to see who Jesus was, and he trusted and believed him. And Jesus healed him from his blindness. But that was Bartimaeus. But what about Zacchaeus up in his tree? He was still hiding. And he was waiting for Jesus to come closer. And Jesus came closer and closer and closer until he was right underneath Zacchaeus's tree. Zacchaeus, come down. Zacchaeus, come down. I'm staying at your house today. I'm staying at your house today. Zacchaeus hurried down out of his tree and he said, come this way. Come this way. The crowd began to shout, he's a thief. He's a, thief. He's a, sinner. He's a sinner. Why would Jesus eat with him? Why would Jesus eat with him? You see, Thomas, the crowd saw Jesus heal a blind man but they couldn't understand why Jesus would help a bad man. So why would Jesus help a bad man? Well, you've got to remember, Jesus came to save everyone, the good and the bad. So, Jesus also saved Zacchaeus. After dinner, Zacchaeus stepped out into the street. He didn't creep. He didn't sneak. He stood tall even though he was short, and he said to the crowd, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for stealing from you. Sorry for stealing from you. Then his servants came out with his bags of his precious coins. Oh. And 
Zacchaeus thought to himself, Jesus invited himself into my house. I invited him into my life. Then Zacchaeus said, Half of everything I own. Half of everything I own. I'm giving it to the poor. I'm giving to the poor. If I've stolen your coins. If I've <laughs> stolen your coins. I'll pay you back four times the amount. I'll pay you back four times the amount. And all the crowd cheered. <laughs> and Jesus said, this man is saved. This man is saved. He too is in God's family. He too is in God's family. So you see, there was two different guys who Jesus saved. Blind Bartimaeus, he saw something about Jesus. Jesus was the Lord of everything. So he trusted Jesus and the Lord gave him sight. He followed Jesus and the Lord saved him. But then Zacchaeus, he saw who Jesus was. He saw that Jesus must be his Lord. And he trusted in Jesus. And he obeyed Jesus. And Jesus saved him too. The Lord saved two very different men that day. A poor blind beggar and a rich and greedy tax collector. So how do we get Jesus to save us? Well, you've got to do two things. You've got to see who Jesus is. You've got to see that Jesus is the Lord over everything. And he is the saviour. He can save you and me and everyone, right? And then you can say a simple prayer. And this prayer is just three words you can remember. You say, sorry, and thank you, and please. You say, I'm sorry that I didn't live with Jesus as my Lord. And you pray that to God. And you say, Thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus to come and save me. And then you say, please, please help me to live with Jesus as my Lord so I can give him glory. And if we say that and mean it, he'll save us. Who's going to save us now? We're stuck on this side of the creek, remember? That is right. But I have radioed your parents to let them know that you're okay, and another park ranger's gone to tell them. But for tonight, you better camp out here until the creek goes down. I brought a tent over that you guys can set up just over here. Oh no, do I have to share a tent with her? Well, you could sleep outside, you know, under the stars, but it looks like it's probably going to rain again tonight, even though that we're in the desert. So I recommend share the tent. But I'll be back soon with some tent pegs from my four-wheel drive that you can use. I'll see you later. What do you think about what Dan said? I think he's right. I can see how the way this is don't like actually know what they're doing. No, I mean about the story. Well, I don't know. I reckon he's right. I reckon that Jesus is Lord and he's been sent to save us. Come on, it's gonna get dark soon. I'm still not convinced, is he? No, give him a big clap. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> you guys did a great job then being part of that the drama. That was awesome. I especially like that. Cha-ching, cha-ching. That was really good. All right, so there were two characters that came up here that... Um, sorry, didn't come up here. Two characters that Ranger Dan spoke about. But the... Bartimaeus... And he couldn't, he couldn't see. And then there was Z. And what happened with Zacchaeus? He had lots of money. All right. So I had a chat with that. Uh, cha ching, cha ching. Good job. I had a chat with Ranger Dan beforehand, and I said, Ranger Dan, the story you're going to tell today, what's the message of it? And this is really, really important. And he said to me that we need to see who Jesus really is. He is the Lord of everything. That's a lot of stuff, but that's everything. And he is also the one who saves us. So that's the important message you need to remember. All right, I'm going to invite Nanu up here, and I'm going to invite Bethany up here, and we're going to have a quick chat about... A book review. I don't know where the mic's gone from there. 
It was there. It disappeared. All right. So, Beth, come, Bethany, come on over here next to Nanu. Can I get a round of applause for Nanu? She's our children's minister at our church. But this week, she is a koala, as you do. A very, <laughs> she's hot. <laughs> she said that, not me. Cool. All right. So, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. You ready? Yeah. One, two, some. Okay. Hi, boys and girls. Oh, they're asleep. They left the building. Hi, boys and girls. Oh, good. You're in the building. I was just checking. So this is Bethany. And remember yesterday we were told about the bookstore? Who remembers that? Yeah. So they're nice books. And there have been kids among us who've been taking books to read. And Bethany is one of them. And she read The Garden, The Curtain, and The Cross. So she's going to tell us about it. So I'm going to ask her a few qu questions, and then she's going to read what she prepared. Are you ready, Bethany? Yeah. Okay, the first question is, when you first saw the book, what did you think of it? I thought it would be about plants. I liked it that it was colorful, too. Wow, okay. So after you read the book, wh what do you like that's in the book. It tells us about God and the story of Jesus and in an easy way. I like that it was tr a true story that matches what is in the Bible. Oh, okay. What was the most interesting thing about this book? That there was a curtain in a temple and that it ripped when Jesus died. Oh, wow. It ripped when Jesus died. Oh, my goodness. You guys better find the book and find out what happened. So, why do you think it's good to read that particular book? It's short, easy, and informative, and it is true. It has pictures that help explain the story. It also has speech to help us understand better. Awesome. Now, Bethany, you read the book and you enjoyed it, didn't you? But... Why would you tell the others to read the book? I would. If they are not a Christian, I would it would help them learn and hopefully follow Jesus. If they are a Christian, it will make them learn more, more about Jesus and how he forgives our sins. I learned a lot about of this new things about this book. Oh, good job. Everyone clap for Bethany. And if you want to read this book, you can tell your parents about the book. It's at the bookstore in the Parents Cafe. All right. That's a really good suggestion, Bethany. We like that suggestion. Good job. All right. Nana is going to stick around for a few more minutes. There is something that we have here at church on a Friday afternoon. Not a Friday night. A Friday afternoon. Hands up if you go to Kid Zone. Ooh, oh, there's a, a fair bit of, of them. them. All right, so Nana's going to talk to us about kids, and so hands down, and she's going to say why it's such a great idea that you come out here and hang out at church on a Friday afternoon. Thank you, Nat. So Friday afternoon from 4 p.m. to about 6 p.m., we have Kid Zone, and Kid Zone is our primary edge kids program. So if you're in kindy, you can come all the way to year six, and we have. Our friends come together, so you, you have age groups together, and some of the friends you have here also come to Kid Zone. So we have activities, we learn about Jesus. Who liked all the stories we were told about what Jesus did? I loved all those stories because I learned a lot about Jesus. So we get to learn about Jesus as well. We play games. Who's like the games we've been playing? <laughs> we do dances. Remember the dancers who are helping us with worship? We do a lot of that as well. And we meet with our friends. And then after that, at 5.30, we have dinner. Who likes food? <laughs> oh, you guys like food. Okay, we do have dinner. So if you're interested in coming to Kid Zone and you're from kindy to year six, you can tell your parents to either talk to one of the leaders in the church or in their pack, in the parents' pack, there was a flyer 
in it that will tell them everything about it. If you lost your flyer, you can talk to any of the leaders and they'll get you a new flyer. Okay? Okay, they're asleep, okay? Okay. Okay, see you then. All right, thank you, Nanu. That's awesome. So if you are kindy, you one, you two, you three, you four, you five, you can come to Kid Zone on a Friday afternoon, have lots of fun, do games, do activities, and then you have food. Year six, you can't come. Sorry. Year six, you're going to youth life. All right. All right, we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. Okay. All right. Let's have a couple more songs and then we're going to get started for the rest of the day. Okay, so everybody up on your feet, standing up. Um, are we doing this? Yes. Yes, I love this yes. song. All right, let's do a snap. One, two, three. Snap. One, two, three. Snap. And again. Snap. And again. And a round of applause for these people. Very good. You also got to yell snap. So when it says snap on the screen, you got to say yell snap. Can you yell snap? Yeah. Hey, good job, good job, good job. Can you, can you yell it and clap at the same time? Can you say snap? Yeah. Even louder, even louder. Yeah. Good job, good job. This is our one with our bounces. I want to see some more movement up there with you red hat people. You sick this? Moving around everywhere. Good job. Cross the old fella down by the river, sitting on a great big rock. Cross the old fella could be dinner, cause here comes a hungry cop.
get yourself comfy. Okay, now, I'd like to do a little thank you to some important people who have come together and done this. If you've done Quack before, you'll know that most of the people who are here today, and there's about 100 grown-ups, 100 adults, that come and help out and they donate, donate. They give their time to be here. So they're not paid. They just come here and they volunteer. Now, I want to do a huge thank you to all the activity leaders, okay? The leaders who don't necessarily take you around, but the people who organise your activities. So, where is Sue? She was here two seconds ago. She's disappeared. All right, everyone have a check out this lady over here. This is Sue. Give her a wave. And a clap. Everybody in K1, 2 and 3, she's your lady. She's your gal. She's been in charge of this. And I think she's been doing this for many, 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 many years, haven't you, Sue? She started in 2003. Yeah. I know, right? She's, that's older than some of you. That's like dinosaur ages, isn't it? <laughs> older than your sister. Good grief. Gosh. All right. And back to me. All right. So we're going to say thank you, Sue. Okay. Now, is Nicola in the house? Somewhere? Can't see it? Doesn't matter. Nicola's in charge of the senior stuff this year. So she's now looking after the four, fives and sixes. Okay, so if you see Nicola, you say, thank you, Nicola. All right, she might be organising stuff. I think they're going to have a bit of a something, something next. Anyway, now, a huge thank you, and I'm not going to name all the people because I know I'll forget somebody, but you guys are all awesome and we really, really appreciate you. To the people who are down at Riverston helping out with all the trivia that you guys did the other day and all the craft that you did as well and everything organised in that. And another big thank you to the people who organised the cooking, the science, the games, the dancing, the craft, the lots of craft, okay, and the construction and the sand plan and things like that. So I think we need to give them a huge round of applause. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. All right, they work their butts off. All right, let us finish up with a quick prayer. How are we going for time? We are smack bang on time. This is good. Now, Ranger Dan <laughs> taught us to pray a teaspoon prayer, and I'm going to pray, pray a teaspoon prayer now. A thank you, a sorry, and a please. Okay, so everyone, let's close our eyes and bow our heads and do what we do when we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity for us to gather here at Quack. We are sorry that we have sinned against you and we will try to be so much better. Please be with us today as we continue on our day and keep us safe. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys do an amazing amen. You really do. Such a good amen. Good job. All right. We are going to stay here. Now, when you leave here today... And do you have morning tea? Okay. You need to take all your stuff with you because the seniors are actually staying.